Hello and welcome to the EEPROM 9. I'm not wearing any trousers, so I can show you my wang. Not really. On the item of the agenda today? On this Tear Down Tuesday at the 4th of the 23rd, 2013 at 6.54pm is a teardown of a Verifone Zon JR, or Junior if you're your Yank, XL. Credit card terminal. Now for those of you who don't know what these things are, they're pretty much how you pay for stuff with credit cards and debit cards and all that malarkey. And for those of you who were alive long enough to see the old machines, they were swipe and completely controlled by the operator. There was none of this entering your own PIN code nonsense. And if the checkout staff decided to clone your card, you could do jack shit about it. But times have changed since then. Well, uh, sometimes they have. There are still systems of the world that use this particular system, mostly in various foreign countries. I can't think of any at the top of my head, but some I have been to still use this system. I don't think it's anywhere in Europe, though. It's generally the places outside of Europe. So, yes. Shall we? Oh, 6.55 now. Let's get cracking it open. And out with the power. So after screwing the device, we now have the cover back off and some very sore holes in it. So, let's remove the back PC, because currently we're being mooned by the PC. B, not PC. And here we have copyright 1987 Verifone, and of course the model number of the actual device. So this was designed back in 1987. Ooh, this would have definitely been a bit into use in the 90s then, which is probably why I remember things like this so well. These come in a variety of things, so if we pop this out, we have the motherboard free. On this end, we have the card reader circuit tree. What looks to be some buffering circuitry and amplification goodness up here. I don't recognise the part number. Here we have what is obviously the display controller, and most importantly, a VFD display controller, made by Fubata, who are the world leaders in those things. And it is an unknown type, but you should be able to read the part number if you're in watching in HD, and this particular chip is from 8939. So, 1989, 39th week. There isn't too much on this board a beeper, a high voltage inverter coil, some driver circuitry to up the voltage for the VFD, and of course, no doubt, I can't see the traces very well. But this thing is probably going to be to a certain degree responsible for actually scanning the keypad. In fact, no, I correct myself for that actually goes back onto the motherboard. Now, because this is a nice old style terminal, it's got its own modem built in, which is why you've got optocouplers and all that whatchamacallits there. A nice transformer, you've got two. I'd imagine one would be a send or receive line or allow you to daisy chain different devices together. An RS232 serial port, which I'm currently still trying to work out how to power. A voltage regulator of some kind, which is an L387A, I'd imagine switch mode. It takes an AC input, even though I give it a DC. But hey, such is life. It's happy. This will probably, yeah, it's pretty hot because I've had it on. Now, the main CPU will make all the Spectrum fans wet. Because it's a Z80. And of course you've got your classic EEPROM right here with the operating system on. With two what looks to be mask ROMs. Actually, I take that back. 
they are probably more likely to be RAM because I don't see any other location other particular RAM chips on board because this is 7.4 logic this is this is this is this is this is that's not that'd be for the modem probably same with that this is um, uh, 7.4 and we've got some 40,000 series logic here so yeah and of course the internal battery which as you can see I have replaced so yeah this is your RAM I don't know how much because I don't know how to identify the memory capacity of the chips your CPU with of course your EEPROM holding the set the operating system as you could call it and of course two support chips now one of these will be the IO chip which is that one the PIO and the other CTC I don't recognize that not entirely sure but once again 1989 technology we're looking at a device that was built somewhere between 1989 and 1990 by the looks of it and of course a crystal clocked at 7.15909 megahertz so the Z80 is running close to its top CPU speed and the caps here are just for power filtration these will be various power filtration caps for the chips all in all, quite a simple little computer, but nonetheless, a computer. Because even a terminal is a computer. Now, sadly I don't have an EEPROM programmer, or I'd show you the code on this. I'm going to have to source an EEPROM programmer, so I can show you the code on these sorts of things, because I reckon it'd be great to get nitty gritty into the software, rather than just the hardware, and i really just tell you what it is. I don't know what all the individual 7.4 logic is doing, but I'd imagine it's various buffers for the keyboard output, display, a output which will probably be raw ASCII sensor display chip in this half. And all that happy jazz. A rather interesting board actually. I was quite surprised when I saw a Z80 CPU in it, and because of its scale and how available the instruction set is very hackable we like that shall we reassemble it I reckon so because we like it it's reassembled and no security devices to lock you out when you open them up not like today's credit card terminals see you in a bit looks like our playing around caused a bit of a problem however it is relatively easy to rectify there we go we have some corrupt shit on the display which is not a fantastic sign is it eh. hang on a minute no the date's wrong Thanks for watching, I'll get this set back up immediately. And after some fun we have the device recovered. Obviously, e that might actually be a security thing where it just dumps the memory when it detects it's been opened up. So all the codes that it sends the data to are lost. But then again that could also just be me knocking the actual battery I installed out of place. If anyone has any ideas, put through your thoughts. And yes, let's have the comments back in the comments section. I've been missing them in the last lot of videos I've uploaded. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. That was my Teardown Tuesday.